usually you think of one song that, or one melody that they might sing, but actually they're singing, uh, they can sing one melody for four or five times and then they'll change and sing another melody and I'd change again and sing another melody. So <laughs> there's so many variations to almost every bird. I don't know, I think they all knew me, <laughs> except those that would just be passing through because they weren't afraid of me. I mean, I didn't try to tame them or that, but uh, they just knew, oh, it's Catherine, passing <laughs> by type of thing. When I was uh, in my 20s, the war was on, my husband was overseas, and uh, I saw an advertisement for the Federation of Ontario Naturalists, and uh, they were talking about this course. I think it was because we had such wonderful leaders at those summer camps, and Jim Bailey was one of them, and he was the foremost uh, Burger, I think, in Ontario at the time. And uh, he taught us to uh, learn the birds by ear because you couldn't see them. You know, the many little warblers, they'd be up in the tops of the trees and you could, couldn't see them among the leaves. So we did learn their songs. And then, of course, it goes from there to, of course, you can always tell a red-winged blackbird uh, you know, you know your robin without looking at it, and uh, the other common birds. About 1973 to four, there were so many Red Cross bills in the district, and uh, they had such beautiful voices in March when they started. Uh, I guess it was coming on mating time, and. I wanted to record them. By the time I got my equipment, the Red Cross bills had gone. And you know, they have never been back, really, in any number since. There may be the odd one back, or a few of them, but not uh, hundreds of them like there were that year. You'd hear them at night with the window wide open and I had the microphone right at the bedside so I could record out the window. And that's how I got 40 minutes of two great horned owls duetting and that 122 species, but I've recorded more than that. There were a number that I still, uh, when you go back over it, I haven't uh, been able to identify them. Like I think there's one there that's a yellow rail, but I haven't found anyone yet that can tell me that is what it is. And it took a long time to identify the Cooper's Hawk because all of the recordings are, are um, published cassettes or CDs that I would buy. No one had these sounds that the Cooper's Hawk would make. And it's the same with many of them, like the Blue Jay. No one has got the sounds that I've been able to record. Like the first three productions were on records. And uh, then cassettes, 1984, I think would be about the date for the cassettes and then 1990 for the CDs, when people would be asking for CDs. I think the metal arc and so many of them, there's, there's a warmth to those vinyl records that you don't get on a CD. Well, I don't know whether I could say a favorite bird because I really like them all. But 
uh, for songs, I think the outstanding one is the Western Metal Arc because you can hear it from half a mile away. They could start singing out in the field, you can hear them. You have to be able to be up at three or four in the morning or up at midnight when the owls are hooting or this type of thing. You can't spend crazy hours like that, even on the weekend, because your weekend is a catching up for work. It wasn't until after I retired that I was able to really get at the recording. But I can remember one night going to bed and I just said, well, George, I'm going out to record. And he just said, well, you're not going out by yourself in the dark recording. But uh, so he came out with me and that was a perfect night to record. 